But if you can't shut it down forcefully, eventually everyone has to adopt it. And you're seeing that with countries, you're seeing that with companies, you're seeing that with AI. The Fed now pivoted and instead of raising rates, they stopped and now they're dropping. And so they're going to be dropping continuously until the end of 2025. That's going to increase the money supply like crazy. Liquidity is going to be up. We're probably going to get to 200,000. We don't even need to transfer US dollars from a bank account to a reserve in Bitcoin because we already get paid in Bitcoin. We are accepting Bitcoin directly and we are circumventing and avoiding using banks. 20% of our sales are already in Bitcoin. When education is funded by the government, when health is funded by the government, when everything is funded by the government, we start losing control of our individual sovereignty. The dollar has lost 95% of its purchasing power since 1938. Back then, a father could work a nine to five job with about eight kids sitting at home and a wife who's not working and taking care of those kids and be well off. Well, why is that? Most people will be using Bitcoin without even knowing they're using Bitcoin. The current system makes us very selfish. High time preference. We need stuff now. I need to get my nice new car. It's going to be a crazy shift, man. For those who do own Bitcoin, even if it's 0.1. What makes Bitcoin so special for you that you even go ahead and create an exclusive watch brand with it? <laughs> yeah, so I would say part of the reason why I decided to do a, you know exclusive limited editions of Bitcoin watches is my passion for for Bitcoin. Um, you know, when I was in college, I was trying to figure out what was wrong with the current system. Um, I could just tell that something was off. Lots of printing of trillions of dollars, you know, expansionary money supply. And I couldn't figure it out until I ran across Bitcoin. And once I ran into that, it hit a light bulb moment. And so for me, you know, I'm not an expert, um, but I call myself a pleb who at least understands the basics of what's wrong with this current system that we live in and what the solution is. And to me, it's very simple from a macro perspective. We finally have something that protects our purchasing power. Um, initially think about this. It's kind of weird because what, what, what's, I, I think it's about 10 to 12 years in existence for Bitcoin. I don't even know. Um, not very long. And so I discovered it. What is it? 2017. So I don't know about six, seven years ago. Um, and back then we didn't know if it was going to be a, something that holds your purchasing power. Right. I mean, we, we only had like a six year sample. Right. And so, but the thing that caught my eye was, wait a minute, it's decentralized, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's immutable, permissionless, and it's scarce. So it's all the things that, you know, the current system doesn't give us. And so that gravitated, you know, me into it. You know, I didn't even know if it was going to hold purchasing power. But to me, just, just thinking, wait, I can send someone in another country some money and no bank is involved. This is just crazy. So that was a light bulb moment to me. And to me, I wanted to create something special that would signify my passion for it. And, you know, with that, we have the Bitcoin watches, as you have seen uh, in this show, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I mean, that that's a little bit of a start as to how and, and, and why I wanted to create watches and what my passion is for Bitcoin to start. I, I, I love that a lot. Uh, and I think uh, your brand even evolved and probably also uh, your knowledge in, on Bitcoin also evolved because I saw some some early videos that you made and, and where you also made Litecoin uh, videos and now you actually switched to Bitcoin only. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually like the first time uh, we got in contact, I was seeing it and I was like, oh no, he has also other watches. I was like, oh, then I cannot work with him. And I was like, no, okay, he's Bitcoin only now. Yeah. Uh, wh where where did the focus to Bitcoin only come from? Where I was like, okay, like okay it's not not data things like i i really want to focus on 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 bitcoin solely which is really uh, i think an important step yeah um initially you know and, and i think most people that are watching this you know they were never or most likely not bitcoin only to start um and that was me um it was a lot of coins it was still a, a battle for projects to figure out what was going to be sound money what was going to be the one and evidently it's, you know, Bitcoin, you know, if you're holding any other coin or any other project over the past four years, I mean, you're down. And ultimately the reason why Litecoin, uh, and I'll probably get burned for this for, for, from the Litecoin community, um, they're, they're a great community and their, their goal is to try to find a peer to peer medium of exchange. That's cheap to transact. So Litecoin is great at that. 
but in terms of holding your purchasing power, it it, it really has not. Um, it, it it's not a store of value, and it hasn't been, and it's because that's not its 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 goal. Um, and it, it has played a role in Bitcoin's history. Like for example, I think the first Lightning uh, payment for for that was tested with uh, uh, Charlie Lee. So the creator of Litecoin, right? So he's always been deeply involved with with Bitcoin, and I I do have to say, um, you know, I do appreciate that community a lot because it was a community. It's people, you know. It, it, at the end of the day, it's people that ended up supporting us and helping us. And I'm not one to to just be negative and bash on people just because they like one thing or another. Uh, we can disagree on things, but I'm 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 always a positive guy. We can be friendly, you know. Um, but, you know, I realize, hey, you know, it's Bitcoin that is going to win the game at the end. I mean, it really is. Um, there's going to be tons of options out there um, for speculation. But when it comes to storing value long term, it's Bitcoin. And it's the most secure. Um, it's the largest you know, in terms in terms of game theory, you know, it's already winning the game. And I do believe that in the future, we're going to see a, more of a Bitcoin standard. More companies are going to adopt it. Uh, more countries are going to adopt it. They're going to use it as a reserve. And so, you know, I was thinking about these things and I'm like, hey, if I want to build a brand that is going to last a long time and something that I'm deeply passionate in, I mean, to me, it only makes sense to, to do Bitcoin only. Now, again, I'm not hating on the Litecoin community. <laughs> <laughs> They're great, um, but that's a little bit of uh, you know that explanation, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it's it's so interesting because I was also deep playing shitcoins <laughs> mm -hmm. and I talk very open about it, and um, I I still am watching the the shitcoin social media accounts <laughs> from time mm -hmm. to time. I'm like, oh, well, let's see how it does, and, and I'm like, okay, they are still promising the same thing they promised like three years ago. They yeah. still didn't do it. It's really interesting. I mean, mine was really 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 shit coining like that that was like deep meme shit coin yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Not, nothing like that uh, you you also uh i mean to a certain extent I, I know it because we transact for the partnership in, in bitcoin but to, to what extent has the business coin vigilante already uh, adopted a bitcoin standard so that's one thing that uh we're doing so for example uh, a big part of our reserve for our balance sheet is bitcoin um and and, and part of it is is because Sometimes we don't even need to transfer U.S. dollars from a bank account to our reserve in Bitcoin because we already get paid in Bitcoin. So that's the beauty. Think about it. So, you know, we are accepting Bitcoin directly and we are cir circumventing and avoiding using banks being the third party for that transaction. And it's crazy. So people are literally buying our watches and goods and services, which is paying with Bitcoin. And so I know that a lot of people say, don't use your Bitcoin. Look, uh, I'll tell you right now that probably about 20% of our sales are already in Bitcoin. And so people do like to use it. People like to spend it sometimes. And again, it's about that new economy. So when I think of Bitcoin, it's, it's not sometimes what we like to think of is like, it's just coins kind of like in a video game and you have a coin and then you send it here and then it, no, 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 no. We got to think a little bit bigger. We have to think of a system. It's a protocol and it's a software. So either we're going to be using the super centralized shitcoin banking system where it's a third party. They can close your account. It takes multiple days to clear a transaction. Um, you know, they're basically lending your money anyway. So it's not even your money the moment that hits the bank. Or we're going to opt in into the alternative, which is Bitcoin, and that is decentralized. That offers a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, a system in which you can transfer value, right? So we're using the Bitcoin protocol. We're not just sending coins, you know what I mean? So to me, I like to, to think of it that way. I'm using, we're using this system at Coin Vigilante to store value and to transfer value. That's the way I see it. I love that twenty percent. I think that, that's high. And honestly, I was like probably like five to ten percent. At least that, that's the numbers that I always hear from 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 other people. And they're like, oh, like 
uh, no, we, we, we don't want to do it because it's a hustle and something. Oh, if, if you're doing something for Bitcoin, you have to accept Bitcoin as, yeah, as payments. Yeah. And I know it was for me also a big hustle. Like I uh, accepted from the Bitcoin way the first actual Bitcoin payment uh, in, 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 in Bitcoin. I was like, oh gosh, like how is that working with taxes? What do I have to figure yeah. out? And it's so easy. <laughs> when yeah. You really like research, like you research like an hour and you're like, okay, like I don't have to do anything for that actually. Just have to buy like one tool so I can accept it and I have to tell my uh, my accountant that I do that. And it's pretty easy and straightforward actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not very hard. People make it sound a lot more difficult. And honestly, living in the Bitcoin standard and learning how to use Bitcoin is a lot easier than the current financial system um it's very complicated and they make it very complicated for a reason okay i was in college taking an international business degree and not once in my economics classes that i took did i learn of how money is printed they didn't explain very much about how the federal reserve was created um which was created in jekyll island you know about a hundred years ago and it was created by some of the wealthiest people who controlled probably about 40% of the wealth in the world. And it was these bankers. And I think it was a, a, a person from Congress who also met in a very private meeting. And they were trying to figure out how to create an entity, a financial entity that is actually separate from the government and how to centralize money. Because back then there were thousands of banks. Okay, so you could actually argue that you know, it was a competitive, almost kind of like free market in terms of lending, in terms of borrowing, in terms of just banking. And they created basically monopolized money to where there would be no competition. They can control rates. They can control the flow of money. They can control control everything, expansionary monetary policy, contracting monetary policy. And so it, it, it's just nuts. Um and I think I'm kind of deviating here from what we're even talking about, but it's part of the reason why I'm so like deep in Bitcoin, dude, because people have no understanding of the current financial system um, that they don't even want you to know. And going back to college, you know, there's a who 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 funds college? OK, at least in the in the U.S. Well, even even in you, uh, Austria, right? Yeah, yeah, like uh, colleges are all funded by the government. Oh, okay, exactly. So, um, and who prints the I mean, money? There are, there are, of course, private entities and private university, but it's like a smaller percent, especially yeah, in Austria. But for example, here, you know, if you want to go to college, you can take out a loan backed by the federal by the federal government. So the government will cover your loan. So whether that's two hundred thousand dollars over four years or fifty thousand dollars over four years, it doesn't matter. And it's backed by the government. And so the government, you know, is wanting you to go to college and they're also printing money and they're also using that to be able to allow you to go to college. And obviously they have an agenda in place with that education. So we live in a matrix and we are the, when education is funded by the government, when health is funded by the government, when, when everything is funded by the government, you know, we start losing control of our individual sovereignty. And so it's part of the reason why people don't really understand the problem as it is because the system doesn't allow you to. So it's tough. I'm, I'm trying to convince people to buy Bitcoin. I'm trying to, even right now, I'm like, hey guys, I'm telling you right now, you know, you everything's just getting more expensive around you. Not just inflation, which is, you know, CPI, core inflation. So it's just consumers and goods. You know, everything. We are seeing a huge debasement. We're seeing assets get more expensive. We're seeing, you know, everything get more expensive, but they don't get it. They don't want to get it and they're too comfortable. And it's something that worries me, man. But I mean, what what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I, I have I've always struggled to get close friends and family to just wanna deep dive into Bitcoin. Uh, it's 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 a hustle. Um I mean uh... I want to go back to the colleges also, but first, uh, the the orange billing is hard. Uh, it's it's something that you cannot force on people. Uh, yeah. I tried it in the beginning and I completely completely failed. Um, it's something that has to come from within a person, um, and they they will come. I had a, a lovely couple uh, who is far far family, like a 
from my girlfriend's friend, uh, their uncle, something like that. And they uh, wanted to have like a meeting with me uh, and talk about Bitcoin. And it was so lovely because it's like two really normal people uh, in the 50s, 60s, uh, and they were uh, loving it. Uh, and they were just like, okay, but we, we think the euro might not have a future. We, we are a little bit concerned, so we want to diversify. And I was like, so I, I was so proud of them in that moment that yeah. like two completely normal people who have normal ass jobs, like completely normal. Uh, and they're like, I don't know if the euro has a uh, future. And I was like, okay, I, I know the euro has no future. Uh, and that's why I'm in Bitcoin. And that's why they slowly diversify. And they're not like jumping in uh, directly. Right, right. So I think you have to wait till till they actually come. And for the colleges, what I wanted to say is, um, in Austria, it's even worse. <laughs> because uh, in America, you at least have to pay for the uh, university. In mm. Austria, most universities are free. Like literally you can go there, you can sign up and it's free 100%. It's actually they pay you to be a student in a way because you get so many incentives. You get cheaper transportation, you get cheaper gym membership, you get cheaper things if you have just a student pass uh, and uh, and are enrolled in a university and you have to pay nothing for that. So <laughs> I'm always interesting because the uh, when I talk with Americans, they are way more aware of how bad it is when the government is funding funding the universities but in america it's not even that bad like it's bad but it's not that bad uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially how it's in europe is. so that that's really that, that that's really funny funny to see and also one thing uh, that you brought up with the central banks that this um, uh, elite group brought, brought into our lives, uh, the rich people brought into our lives. It's so funny when you see now socialists arguing for central <laughs> banks that I think the, the irony of that is is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But I mean, I think you bring a good point, which is, you know, and we both agree is it first th that couple that you were talking to didn't want to even think about Bitcoin until they learned the problem. Right. You mentioned, well, something's going on with the euro. What's going on? So I think it always has to start with at least being aware of the problem. Um, but part of the problem with people figuring that out is they're too comfortable. They can't see it. So and the reason is, dude, I mean, whoever created like I wish I could have invested into it. Like I wish the Fed had a ticker initially <laughs> to where I could invest in them because they're so clever in how they like created this that no one's figured it out. Like, I mean, it's. Basically, it's a hidden tax. So it, it is, we are paying the price. There, no one else is paying the price. Not the government, not the elite. We're playing, paying the price, the bottom 70% for them to keep playing the game. So we, we currently live in a, in a money system that has to continuously expand the money supply. Okay, M2 money supply has to go up in order to keep covering the debt that they took last year. Right. So it's a debt system. So every time there's a deficit, you know, they got to keep paying that deficit and the, all those loans by taking on more debt. Now, where they're able to do that is because we all pay for it. That money's created and we're seeing a debasement of the currency year over year over year. So let me, I actually wrote some notes because I, it was just blowing my mind lately. So let me just ask you this. Let's see if you even know. And it's actually not. I don't know. I, I want to see what you, you come up with. But in the U.S., at least the average median home in the U.S. has increased in price since 1940 by about how much percent? So 1940 till 2024. What do you think is a percentage of average median uh, home increase? Oh, man. That, that's, don't look that, it up. That, that has to be huge. Like what, what, what time span is it? Like, how many years? Uh, like since from like, like 80. 80 years. Oh, man. Like that has to be thousands of percent, right? It's 14,000%. 14, 14,000, yeah. I thought okay. like it so has to be something in thousands. That, that's the average, okay, median home. So the other thing is that I was looking at, okay, cars, 5,500%. 5, uh, S&P 500, 49,000%. Okay, so what has been the common theme since the 1940s, essentially shortly after the Federal Reserve was created, is that in order to stay alive in this world, you have to invest in assets. There is no other way. 
Okay, so we have lost the dollar has lost ninety five percent of its purchasing power since the nineteen thirty eight. It's that crazy, dude. So, but it, it it sucks because people like back then a single a, a father could work a nine to five job with about eight kids sitting at home and a wife who's not working and taking care of those kids and be well off. Well, why is that? Because that's how it should have been when you have, you know, a store of value, when you have sounder money, okay? When, you know, the dollar and the economy was backed by something relatively scarce, which is gold that the government can't play with, right? And so right now, people are poor, dude. Like, peop like it, it is, like, the younger generation is, is basically fucked. <laughs> there is no other way. I mean, it, it, it's 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 such an unfortunate thing that we've been seeing, and people don't care about it. Um, and but people always argue this. But wait a minute, dude, what are you talking about? Wages have increased as well. Yeah, three thousand three hundred percent. So it's not keeping up with everything else. Now lately, we finally have something, which is Bitcoin, and that's why I I, I try to get people to like think you know think about it, like Bitcoin since its existence has grown exponentially and the annualized average rate of return over the past five years has been about 55%. If you're just averaging it, you know what I mean? So obviously you can buy at bottoms and tops and get a much higher percentage. If you just put your money in the S and P 500, which is like an 8% return on average, that's not even, I mean, that's not even keeping up with the, the debasement of currency. So, you know, the money supply since 2008 has grown, I think it's an average of 7 to 8%. So that's, that's the debasement, right? So you have to basically put your money somewhere that can give you a higher return than that. But that's not considering other asset prices going higher either, right? That's an average. So people have to understand there's a major debasement and you have to protect capital. But unfortunately, you know, only the top 10% of people are doing that. Like if you probably look up the numbers, the top 10% probably own maybe 70% of all assets in the world. Maybe 80. I don't know. I mean, we have to look. Bottom 50%, dude, what do they have? Dollars, euros, the currency getting destroyed every every year. So if we look again with this 8% debasement happening year over year, 8 times 10 years is what? 80%. Dude, you're going to you're going to lose 80% of your purchasing power by year 10 if we start today. Yeah, and it, it is brutal. Uh it, it's something that uh, a lot of people don't don't realize because it's a slow death in the in the bathroom. Uh it's the frog analogy, but I have I have a lot of hope honestly because <laughs> for, I think that frog analogy where like the, it boils slowly to death when it gets hotter and hotter is actually not true. There, there are some people that, that tested this and I was fascinated by it. The frog actually tries to jump out uh if if, if he can. Uh, and I hope, uh, and that's what also like uh, when I see an older couple or when I see people uh, like uh, asking, okay, well, like why is the euro losing so much value? Um, and yes, they are trying really hard to get everyone to agree that 2% or 3% is really good, <laughs> which is not. Uh, okay. And then also this Jeff Booth thing of like, uh, we should not count of zero. We should actually count the productivity in. So even if we actually had 2% inflation, we would actually have like 8% inflation because we have to account for the productivity gains because we are getting better in everything all the time. So yep. uh, that, that, that's fantastic. But people, people are just not aware of, of of that. I mean, I think people that listen to this, like ninety five percent, probably are aware of this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are always like some some portion of the people that are completely new to the thing, and maybe that's the first uh, podcast or first few podcasts. Uh, but it, it it's something that we have to get out there, and we have to orange pill. That's why I'm also really liking uh, subtle Bitcoin signs. So I I don't wear a shirt where it's like Bit Bitcoin or something, some like some mm. rebel thing i don't like it to to have like massive signs on there i just like have like a small bitcoin sign here small bitcoin sign here yeah. and i think that's uh that, that's like the subtle defensive way to the orange build your family and i i noticed that the closest the family member are 
the more Bitcoin they actually get and uh, uh, like the closest people like my mom, dad, sister, uh, some some of my cousins, they all have Bitcoin now because they are close to me and they, I'm always talking about it. And at some yeah. point it makes sense, yeah. Also girlfriend, of course. Uh, but yeah, we, we have to be in our family, that digital soldier, uh, that 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 uh, orange sun in the family that uh, is promoting Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, I think you're doing a great job with the watches because this en enables a lot. Uh, and yeah, and so that that's the thing where, where we have to go. Yeah, I mean... It yeah, unfortunately, you know, we have to take that role, um, but it's our duty, man. I mean, who who else is going to do it? Because the government's not going to do it. Um, schools are not going to do it. So it has to come back to the individual, you know, basically a decentralized way of, of spreading hope. Um, and I you know, thank God for Satoshi creating Bitcoin when he did, because think about it, as people start realizing the problem, well, what if there was no Bitcoin? Okay, let's say all, all of us cyber hornets out there that now have Bitcoin and we know it's the solution. What if there wasn't Bitcoin? What do you think would be happening? Well, the only way is to try to stop the government, like literally out on the streets protesting, going crazy, trying to stop them from printing money. Well, that's not happening anymore. We're not doing that. We're we're doing a silent and not silent, but peaceful protest by choosing an alternative, which is Bitcoin. Think about that. Like we, we probably would all be out in the streets just going crazy right now, but we don't have to because we finally have something, a, a peaceful transition of wealth that is happening thanks to Bitcoin. Did you hear the Satoshi is a time traveler um, a theory? I actually didn't know. I, I didn't hear uh, it. Uh, I also heard it, uh, I think, a week or two weeks ago, the first time ever. And I was like, what? I have a Bitcoin podcast, a daily Bitcoin, never heard that. It's really a funny a funny thing. Uh, uh, this, the theory is that Satoshi is actually a time traveler that saw all the bad thing that happened since we have central bank uh, money and there uh -huh. was nothing against that. And then they invented time traveling and then he came back 2008 to put the white paper here to fix the problem at the, at the root core. It's, it's a funny thing. Uh, but, but I think that, that highlights that, that I just thought about when, when you're talking about that, because, uh, it's so good that we have Bitcoin. It's almost like aliens watch us and they're yeah. like, oh, they, they yeah. need uh, sound money. They, otherwise they will kill themselves. Yeah, true. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, there, but think about it. I mean, there's, there's been wars created even almost during our lifetimes, simply because we're trying to make sure the dollar continues to be the, the reserve currency. So, you know, now we have Bitcoin, which is offering, a, I mean, they can't even shut it down, dude. What are you going to do? Roll, roll up with tanks to the to, to Bitcoin. I mean, it, you can't shut down Bitcoin. <laughs> you, can't, you can't now, you know, back then, if another country is trying to change the reserve currency or this or that, well, you fly F-16s and F-22s and bomb the shit out of them. Well, you can't do that anymore with Bitcoin. So that's why, but see, that's why. And it, it you know, and, and it goes back to a, a touch point. I want to touch a point with uh, AI because Bitcoin is a tool. And when the government and everyone realized, shit, we actually can't shut down Bitcoin. Like even if we wanted to, we can't do that. And people are going to use it all over the place because it's decentralized. They don't need a bank account. All they need is internet. Um. Well, damn, we all got to use that tool then. I mean, if, if you can't shut it down forcefully, eventually everyone has to adopt it. And you're seeing that with countries, you're seeing that with companies, and you're seeing that with AI. People are weird about AI, okay? People are weird. The people are scared, um, but AI is so smart. Like, it, it is probably like, people need to wake up to this too. So Bitcoin, two things I, I always try to get people to think about. Bitcoin, because that's digital money, and it's going to be the system that we use to transfer wealth. And then AI, because it's going to be another tool. You're not going to shut down AI. AI is not going to be shut down. You're, you're already, it's already out there. And it's incredibly smart, and it's actually going to make the cost of knowledge go to zero. Zero. You're not going to have to pay a consultant. $85 million or $85,000 or $8,000 to get information. A lawyer, you might not even need that. Um, even health. 
Like everything is going down into AI because AI is exponentially smarter than us in every way. Let me, just to prove it to you. Okay, let me do this. Okay, so check this out. Let's see if it works. Hey, Jarvis, are you there? Are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. What's on your mind? Okay, uh, can you give me the percentage, average percentage increase in the M2 money supply going up in the U.S. from 2008 to 2024? So what's the, the annual percentage increase in the M2 money supply? The average annual percentage increase in the M2 money supply in the U.S. from 2008 to 2024 is approximately 6.97%. This reflects the general trend of currency debasement during this period. Okay, um, so what do you think people need to do to hold their purchasing power with this currency debasement? To maintain purchasing power in the face of ongoing currency debasement, people typically need to invest in assets that appreciate faster than inflation. Here are a few strategies. One, invest in real estate. Property values tend to rise over time, often outpacing inflation, making real okay, can a I, strong hedge against can currency I, debasement. Two, can I, can I interrupt? Okay, so what about Bitcoin? Uh, what, what has been the annualized average return in Bitcoin since no, over the past five years? The annualized average return for Bitcoin over the past five years, 2018 to 2023, is approximately 190%. Okay. This means that if you had invested in Bitcoin five years ago, your investment would have grown by around 190% annually over that period. Despite Bitcoin's well-known volatility, it has delivered significant returns compared to more traditional asset classes like stocks and real estate. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so I don't even, dude, I don't even use Google anymore. Like I use ChatGPT. That's all I use. Okay, not only that, it can form lists for me. It can it can make uh, emails for me. It can make the the amount of productivity that it has created for me for all my businesses has been just almost exponential. It's stupid, but see, it's gonna people need to see it as a tool and use it as a tool before it starts taking your jobs and before it starts you know doing all of that. Because if you don't learn how to use the tool, you will become the tool, and so. People need to wake up. I mean, AI is nuts. I don't know how much you know about AI, but it's like, I mean, blowing my mind. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. And Coin Vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing Genesis edition of their watch collections. You have the date of the first ever mined Bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in. I love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions. I love those watches so so much. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis I guess you already bought some Bitcoin and now the most important step is is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss Robin to get your Bitbox. And the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual. You have to have the most secure self-custody setup. You have to secure your own devices. You have to protect your privacy. You have to set up an inheritance plan. And depending on where you live, you even want to have a plan B, a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really, really wrong. And through all those steps, the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. 
It's uh, super interesting because first of all, this very podcast that you're listening to and you are on, uh, it would not be possible without AI. Like it, mm -hmm. I could, I could just not do it without AI every single day. I'm still alone like that. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, yeah. I, I'm, I, there's no cutter, there's no editor, there's nothing else. It's just me. Uh, and the fascinating thing is since I started this, I consistently drop the hours I need for each episode for the post-production, uh, and for the description, everything. And I think, and hopefully uh, my, my audience gives me right here, um, the quality is increasing at the same time. So yeah. I get so good now in aligning the different AI tools <laughs> next to each other and then putting my human input just there at the right time in there that it, where it's necessary. And maybe I actually do an episode on like just like explaining how I do a podcast. Uh, I don't know if it fits in a Bitcoin podcast because it's not a podcast about podcasts. It's a podcast about Bitcoin. Yeah. But uh, I I spend so much time uh, perfecting that uh, stra uh, uh, process and uh, infrastructure around it. And it's a lot of fun. And I even want to make a podcast with AI where I just uh, chat with ChatGPT uh, uh, about Bitcoin. I, I, I will probably do that in, in El Salvador when I'm down there. I will mm. just like put chat GPT there, would put my camera on there with a nice background uh, and we'll just like chat about Bitcoin. And then uh, after an hour, I will see if, if I upload it also, if it's interesting enough. I don't know if it's interesting uh, or, or if it's not interesting me chatting with chat GPT. Uh, but AI is massive. So it's, 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 oh, yeah. uh, I, <laughs> I begin to think that maybe I don't ever need to hire an editor, honestly, Be I, I I think about that all the time. Like I, I need to I an editor, I need to do this and that. But then I'm like, I consistently drop the time that I need for it. And uh, yeah, it gets better and better in it. Uh, for example, one small thing that I do with it, the trailer, uh, I pick myself what things are in there, but AI gives me uh, like 40, 50 options from mm -hmm. there. And I d use two different tools. So I'm not uh, relying on one tool. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, that that is really good. I just like need to uh, look through like 40 different small snippets. That's like really like just two, one, two sentences. And then I really get a grasp of the podcast. And that's then the, in the trailer. And then I don't need to... I don't know, make marks while I speak with you or like listen to the whole thing again yeah. <laughs> and well, find a tracer. That's but, so cool. Just notice what you said. It's like, I don't think I'll ever need to hire a video editor, right? I mean, and, and that's that's what people are going to run into in three years probably. So once it actually goes mainstream and people learn how to use AI, dude, I mean, and so it's, you know, you should actually, I don't know how much you like Raul Paul. Um, have you heard of him? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I listened to him. Wait, Ra do you mean the, um, wait, I will. Uh, uh, yeah, he's with Real Vision. It. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I listened to a lot to him uh, in the beginning. Uh, now, since a long time, not, I don't even know. Yeah, what, I, what I love that guy. He, I know that he, he can get a bad rep with cause shit coining and whatever, this and that, but. Um, guy has just such an amazing macro view. That's what I've always respected about him. It's like this dude can read the macro like a master. And, you know, it, it goes back to, to what's going on too with price. So, you know, he, he has at this point buying Bitcoin even right now, like all you got to do is think about the macro. Like, yeah, okay, I could have gotten it $5,000 cheaper or 10000 but like we got to think bigger. Um, and one of the things that he's been saying as well is a four-year business cycle in which right now we're reaching a point in that business cycle where it happens every four years. Um, the money supply is going to start rapidly increasing. They just now, the Fed now pivoted and instead of you know raising rates, they stopped and now they're dropping. And so they're going to be dropping continuously until the end of probably you know, 2025. And that's going to increase the money supply like crazy. Liquidity is going to be up. And if you actually watch Bitcoin, the Bitcoin chart paired with the M2 money supply together, Bitcoin follows money supply, almost like a positive correlation. It's crazy. So right now, money supply just 
upticked and Bitcoin is slightly now trying to go up and it's going to pair it's going to be almost uh identical. So we're going to start seeing the price of Bitcoin this is my theory um go up and going into the end of 2024 um, and it's also paired with the election. So in 2020, in 2020, it was the same, same shit, dude. Um, it, it's almost like the cycles. It's almost like having cycle paired with election cycle paired with the business cycle. It's all like about the same. So we're going to have this window where the price is just going to be stupid. Um, I, my theory is we're probably going to get to 200,000, maybe more. I don't know, maybe a little bit less, but somewhere around that range. And then, you know, things are going to go crazy. Um, I think we're going to see more announcements next year of countries and companies already accepting Bitcoin and using it as a reserve asset. Um, And I've been hearing a lot about the word collateral lately. I don't know about you, but it's like everywhere now. It's like all of a sudden this word just came, came up. So it'll be interesting. Um, I haven't dug too deep into that, but it makes sense. When it becomes a reserve, you know, well, you want to use it as collateral. You want to borrow against it, this and that. You know, Michael Saylor is definitely talking a lot about that. It's been interesting with the Michael Saylor. I've been watching how, like, you know, people are kind of shitting on him a little bit. Um, but, you know, to each their own. I mean, that's that's the other thing, man. It's, I don't know. There, We live in a world of options, man. Like, I, I don't know what you want me. I mean, maybe you can put someone as a dictator for Bitcoin beliefs, but it's like, that's not the world we live in. And we honestly don't want to all think the same because people always think like, everything is a shit coin. Everything is a shit coin. Right, whatever. Like, dude, okay, fine. You believe that? That's fine. I'm not going to shit on you for that. But it's like, I feel like sometimes we got to chill out a little bit. <laughs> like, like, you know, we're all, we're all trying to, to, to achieve a better place, a better world. And you know why, you know, going back to this, I was thinking about this, you know, why do you think a lot of people are going for shit coins for other assets other than Bitcoin? Like, why do you think? I think there's uh, a lot of components. I think uh, unit bias uh, is actually a big one. Uh, I think when people come into the app, they're like, oh, what, there's like this Bitcoin because they're, they're onboarded with like those coin bases and the normal apps. And then they're like, oh, Bitcoin 60,000, Bitcoin cash under that. And then there's like Ethereum under that. And like th- th- it plays a lot of the roles. Uh, then people really don't want to miss out on something. And if mm. they really want to look for the next Bitcoin, they think that Bitcoin already ran to its uh, maximum capacity and then they want to look to the next one. That I think is an, probably an imp- impact of that. Uh, and there are probably like 100 other reasons that I I, I miss out here. But what, what, are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it all goes back to the risk curve. Um, Bitcoin is always the first mover. Um, it always is. And people are placing their bets on security and safety so if, if you want once again it always it always goes back to this um you want to put your money somewhere where it's going to grow in value over time and bitcoin is the safest bet for that now here's where i also sometimes disagree with some hardcore like bitcoin maxis is like bitcoin only everything bitcoin put it all into bitcoin uh forget about your business sell it this and that put it all into bitcoin i'm like okay 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 i mean i i get it but it's not an income generating thing. So, so Bitcoin is not there to generate income. It's there to store the value of the income that you put in. Okay. So let's get that straight first. <laughs> I, you need a job or you need, you know, cash flow to be able to, you know, add that to your Bitcoin stack. So that's why I always tell people to like, dude, so many people out there like just put all their money into cryptos or Bitcoin and they just hope they're going to make it. And then they stop working. It's like, this is my path for financial freedom. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, that's not your path for fun. That's, that's simply hope and wishful thinking. You need to still create skills. You need to still create and try to generate different streams of income to keep adding to the Bitcoin stack to actually create financial freedom. Right. And so with the risk curve, going back to that, a lot of how psychology of money 
you should read psychology of money if you haven't yet. Um, you know, a lot of the psychology of money is, well, okay, we missed out on Bitcoin. So now we got to start going down the risk curve into more risky investments because we already mi missed out on the upside of Bitcoin. So now we got to start finding other assets that are hopefully going to outperform Bitcoin, um, which it will happen. There will be outperformance, but then it's going to go back to the same thing. All of those things that outperform Bitcoin are going to go down another 99%, and it's all going to flow back into Bitcoin. And over the long term, Bitcoin is going to outperform, and then it's going to be the same cycle. So people need to understand that. So, you know, and I'll be honest, dude, like seriously, um, simply because I understand how those cycles work. My, my, at least from, from my perspective, is how do I accumulate more Bitcoin? Like, that's the ultimate goal. So I understand it's a reserve, it's a store of value. How do I accumulate more? Okay, well, I got businesses that generate cash. That's how I accumulate. Um, I could do a nine to five. That's a way to accumulate. Um, I could also have, for example, my portfolio, as an example, let's say it's 70%, 80% Bitcoin. And then the other 20% is, let's say, NVIDIA. It's Tesla. It's I'm spreading a little bit of my my risk, even though I'm pretty much all in Bitcoin. But I understand that some assets will outperform and go and generate a lot more return. But again, it's a smaller bucket. It's not the other way around, right? I have most of my bucket in safety and and what I know will work for decades and decades. But people think that way though, um, especially DJs and especially the 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 younger generation is. Dude, our system, our, our economic, and blame it on the economic system. Like, that's what I say. Blame it on the system. Our system has, you know, destroyed us so hard that people can't afford homes anymore. People can't even afford to live. That the only way out is to speculate. It is. Like, I, I mean, am I wrong? That you Absolutely have to, wrong. You have to speculate in and just the dumbest shit just to hopefully make it because it's the only thing that's going to give you a higher percentage than, you know, our cost of living going higher. So that's part of the reason. I mean, I'm not, I'm not defending shit coinery or anything, but I'm trying to at least explain that point of view where, you know, people always look for that alpha, that, that higher return. The only thing I have to say is fine, do whatever you want. I mean, it's just trading. I mean, it's like, I can't tell you you're a piece of shit because you're trying to, to, to get a, a percentage return. But at the end of the day, store it safely and turn it into Bitcoin. <laughs> 100%. And, and there are a lot of things in there. Uh, wow, there's a lot to unpack. Um, first of all, like the, the thing that you said in the beginning, the, the talks of Bitcoin mindset, I changed my view a lot on that. Like I was, I was the toxic Bitcoin maxi one year ago. I, I was, really was that completely on Twitter. Uh, and I honestly turned uh, a lot to... I would say a free market maximalist right now, um, where I'm like, okay, I don't see a value in other altcoins. Like I don't see any value in, in uh, anything else than Bitcoin from an altcoin uh, perspective. Uh, so I have my money in Bitcoin. I was invested heavily in, in Tesla right now. I'm not, uh, maybe in the future, uh, I am again, uh, in, in stocks because I really love picking stocks, to be honest. Mm -hmm, I, yeah. bef I did that before Bitcoin and it was so fun. I was watching it every day. I knew, I, I knew more about Tesla than, than most Tesla employees knew. <laughs> I was watching every interview of every Tesla employee and of yeah. course of Musk. Um, so I was really a nerd uh, and I probably will do that again at some point if Bitcoin is kind of not that exciting anymore. Uh, but that probably takes at least like five years, maybe 10 years, I don't know. Uh, and then what I also see a lot with Bitcoiners um, they have this toxic trade of they're putting their own values on the Bitcoin and think then every other Bitcoin has to think the same. For example, yeah. with diet, the carnivore diet, mm. we all know what uh, major benefits uh, uh, meat and carnivore diet and beef has. There are also some disadvantages. And to think that every Bitcoin has to eat only one beef steak a day and nothing else, is just absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's just not the the best way to to get Bitcoin to the masses. 
because we might be successful in pushing Bitcoin to 8 billion people, but we probably will not be po uh, successful with pushing a uh, stake to 8 billion people. I don't, that, that's a harder, that's a harder oh, sell. Yeah, that's, that's a harder stretch there. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny because, you know, I was taking my wife to a couple of Bitcoin events one of them was Bitcoin Day Miami. So it's just, you know, I think Breed Love or, you know, just a bunch of people that are pretty high up there um, were there. And man, dude, she came out and she was like, dude, it's totally a cult. And I'm like, well, that's not what I was trying to prove to you. But I mean, she understood because she was like, wow, like I actually like have never thought of how crazy it is. Like they're right about half the things. But like in her mind and honestly, probably a lot of people that I talked to, they're like, dude, you're in such a cult. Like it's not even... But see, I feel like that's how it is usually. Like we are, since we're the early adopters, we take the burden on being the geeks that are hardcore about this. But it's because, call it, just call it this, where we're the scientists who are first discovering this whole thing. And of course we're, and then we're going to bring it into real world applications where people don't have to be nerdy to understand it. So think about it. That I actually believe, like this is my belief, that most people will be using Bitcoin without even knowing they're using Bitcoin. So they're, they're not even going to understand what the hell's going on. Um, and they don't need to. I mean, honestly, they won't need to. But um, I don't think everyone's going to be like all of a sudden like figuring out how Bitcoin works and, you know, the read the Bitcoin standard. They're not. Um, it's be it's the same thing with the internet. Like, dude, I don't even know. Like, there's a specific like software protocol that the, that the internet runs on, and you could think of that being the Bitcoin protocol that where money runs on. But like, I don't even know what it is. Like, I know there's like a BIP something. I don't even know what it's called. Like, I don't even know. You see what I mean? But I use the internet like crazy. So I it, I don't know. It's a theory. I don't know if people in your podcast have mentioned like what it looks like from a worldwide adoption perspective but it is 100 percent that and uh i talked with jeff booth around that um how bitcoin adoption is and how scaling goes even with michael saylor i talked about that topic and it is 100 percent that there will be bitcoin as the base layer just as the internet there's like this seven layer model of of of, of computing technology where you go mm -hmm. gone back down really with the networking really the hard layers uh, and then there are somewhere on layer seven i think is the application layer i might be wrong yeah. i learned that in school but it's a long time ago uh, and basically the same thing will be built with bitcoin and there will be the bitcoin main chain uh what people have to know uh, only a, a few people will ever be able to even transact on the base layer that we can now transact on the base layer is a massive privilege in like 50 years that, yeah, that yeah. that's that only really big corporations and banks and stuff like that will like, be able like to do huge that transactions i mean huge money Volume. huge transactions yeah and, and then we will have the lightning we have fediment we have like thousands of applications on top of that the bitcoin etf that's a layer two <laughs> uh, that people don't think about we will have apps that don't touch uh, th that uh, you have no control over your bitcoin but they will use bitcoin on the back end so uh, there will be centralization there will be decentralization there will there will be a lot happening uh, on scaling bitcoin but the important thing you always have the option of going the most sovereign route. And that's what's changing the whole system, what I think. Uh, because people are like, oh, then it's like gold and then it will be fiat built on. No, no, like with gold, you don't have the option. You don't have this digital option of sending 10 euros now digitally from Austria to America. That option is not there with, with gold. I think that's a really huge difference. So like go going into that you know because people are saying a lot of layers and things are going to be built on bitcoin and it's going to be virtually impossible for day-to-day -day transactions happening main chain in whatever i don't know 5 10 15 years like i want to because again i'm not an expert um but i'm trying to understand from a macro perspective how that looks in terms of decentralization um because part of part of my again my passion my understanding for why this is 
the alternative to the current system is okay it's decentralized it's peer to peer at at, at that point is it even peer to peer if if i'm trying like if we're trying to send money like through bitcoin and is it decentralized because I, I, to me the more layers that you bring on it's is the more intermediaries that are happening you know being built on bitcoin that makes it less decentralized and less peer to peer right 100%. The more layers you go above it, uh, the the less decentralized it is. That's why people usually argue for an onion model. I mean, that's like, <laughs> we're getting the technical things in here, but there's like Bitcoin and there's like a bunch of layer twos around it. And then there's maybe the lightning layer, which is kind of connecting all the other layer twos. Uh, and you have more uh, decentralized solutions where you have to pay more fee. Because the closer you are to sovereignty, the closer you are to uh, decentralization yeah. and security, the more fees you will have to pay. And the less fees you pay, you uh, offset that with giving up a little control. Like, like that. that's how, that's free market for you. Like yeah. the, 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 the same thing, if you want to transport gold, you can go around with your gold bar, uh, bar in, in the middle of the yeah. street. But if you want to be safe, you better bring protection around you so the, the gold gets not stolen. Like you, you have to pay for trans, uh, moving value. Like th that's that's just how it is. And for the everyday transaction, like if I have uh, $50 uh, in, in my hot wallet on a phone, I don't care about security. But if I have my life savings yeah. <laughs> in a vault, then I pay for security and, and then I care about security. So that's how, that's how I, I, I look I at it. I think this is where I can, you know, understand Sailor's point of view of, you know, Bitcoin's the ultimate collateral. And the reason why the dollar will continue to exist and it will is because we're not going to transact with Bitcoin. I mean, in his opinion, is I think you borrow against that Bitcoin with US shitcoin and then you use that dollar to transact as your medium of exchange, maybe. But, you know, I, mean, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I mean, it, it also, for for capitalism to work, you also need a, a credit system as well. And it, I, I was thinking about it. I was going on Reddit and just basically seeing what people are, like, talking about. Like, what would happen in a Bitcoin standard that becomes a deflationary standard, basically? Because right now we're in an inflationary standard. Like, if you want to make it, assets are the way. But eventually, as Bitcoin becomes a standard, like, if Bitcoin were ever to be legit, the Bitcoin standard, there's actually very little incentive to be taking out loans to go and you know create a new venture, um, to st even start a business because it you know it, it's hard to to get a higher return than than the store of value that currently exists. Like it, it's I, I don't know, it's interesting. Like it's it almost disincentivizes you know credit. But then, you know, it always, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. And I'm trying to think, okay, well, what, what, what's actually the world going to look like in a Bitcoin standard? I don't know if you've covered it. I'm sure you have. You have about 290 podcasts that you've done with hardcore Bitcoiners. I've, so. I've, I've done uh, so, someone, uh, I mean, uh, the, that's just a side road. Uh, someone came up to me at the Bitcoin conference in Amsterdam and said, like, if you actually hold it up for 10 years, you will be the most knowledgeable person in Bitcoin. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, yeah. like, I never thought about that. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I, I will I'll try to keep it up and I never thought about that aspect. But yeah, I, I've just seen my knowledge grow so much in the I, I had no clue about Bitcoin 11 months ago. But the thing that I wanted to do, uh, ask you, um, because I think you already have a window in this Bitcoin standard because you already think more and more in Bitcoin. You already get 20% of your sales in Bitcoin. Obviously, you your company is not on a Bitcoin standard 100% mm -hmm. because it's uh, probably <laughs> you will probably not have a company if you really switch to Bitcoin only because 80% of your sales all of a sudden uh, go bust. So... Um, Maybe from your experience uh, of like seeing fiat businesses, seeing that before Bitcoin and now being more and more Bitcoin standard, what are the changes that you already can see in, in your business and your uh, strategies and maybe in also your thinking as an entrepreneur? Is there anything that you observe that uh, maybe gives a window into uh, a Bitcoin standard? Yeah, well, number one thing is being in a Bitcoin standard or at least adopting it is protecting us from the debasement of currency, which I don't know why businesses are not already doing that. And, you know, 
interestingly, listening to podcasts from huge people. I'm talking like people with hedge funds and, you know, they're asking, how come other big companies have not been adopting Bitcoin as a reserve, you know, just adding into the balance sheet? And they're like, it's actually like a popularity thing. So they don't want to be the first to do it because they're basically going to get shit on. Like, seriously. No, like. It's it's that unpopular. It would be one of the most unpopular things to do among their peers to where like the current system would not like it and they don't want to be the first yet. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, when you're holding billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars in cash, you know, it makes sense to not. But but the CFOs of those companies literally have told people I'm like, because people are like, well, dude, you have cash. Isn't that just constantly being like melted like an ice cube and they're like yeah but it's like it's just the way to play the game like we literally like they're like yeah but you know you're saving that cash to invest in bigger projects that are getting more expensive over time and they're like yeah we know like they're not stupid you know they're not um they're just they're they're waiting for someone to make the move and once that keeps happening it's going to be a ripple effect but right now it's it's still too too like scary for them to do it from a, a, a public relations perspective almost. Um, but going back to, to what I was saying, well, uh, we're seeing, you know, our balance sheet basically grow, increase in value. Um, we're able to invest in our business by creating new lines of watches and by, you know, applying more marketing because we don't have cash that's melting away. We have Bitcoin that's growing in value. So, it's a great business model, dude. I mean, profits, prof, you become a more profitable company right off the bat. Right off the bat. Um, because it, it just grows in value. So I'd, I'd rather be putting my money in, in Bitcoin. Um, and so to me, it's 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 amazing. And going back to what we were saying, you know, it's peer-to-peer -peer right now. And, you know, people are willing to spend the Bitcoin um, to get a, a, a good. Now, we're running into some issues too, though, where especially – you know, maybe I would say the hardcore are like, yeah, I love your watches, but I'd rather have my Bitcoin. And I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> I mean, look, more power to you. I don't, it doesn't really matter to me, but we're running into that issue sometimes. But I'm like, you know, we, we always, people forget too, that especially we, we try to be super low time preference and low time preference is great. You know, you focus more on the future. The current system makes us very selfish. Uh, high time preference. We need stuff now. I need to get my nice new car that I'm going to pay for forever. And I need to make sure I have blingy stuff all the time. Um, but, you know, sometimes a low time preference clouds a little bit of what we're doing. You know, the world still needs to live. It still needs to enjoy. There's a need for expression in humans. What are you wearing right now? A Bitcoin shirt. I don't know. Right. It has that Bitcoin logo. You're expressing yourself. Those glasses, I'm sure you picked those glasses, right? I did. Yeah. <laughs> you want to express yourself in a way that you like to express yourself. My hair, I put it this way for a reason. I like quarter zips for a reason. I wear this watch for a reason, right? So people often forget that. Um, and a lot of times, like sometimes we even get shit, dude. Like people like give us crap. Like you should only be putting in Bitcoin. Like why are you making this? I'm like, just relax. Just relax. Again, going back to like, let's take a chill pill. It's going to be okay. <laughs> free market, like you said, but uh, Bitcoin standard has been positive for us. And I highly recommend other people, especially bigger companies start putting, you know, some of their reserves in Bitcoin, you know, in their balance sheet. And we might see it from, from Microsoft. Let's see. Uh, did you hear that? I heard that. And then I heard also from another person that Apple is in talks to. Have you heard about that? Uh, no, but it's uh, it's public knowledge that uh, Tim Cook has personally Bitcoin. Uh, so mm. that's a positive sign if the CEO publicly already acknowledged <laughs> that he has Bitcoin. Because I think uh, the big CEOs probably all have kind of Bitcoin or like some kind of exposure or like, I don't know, some, some weird Bitcoin friend already gifted them something or something like that. But he publicly acknowledges that Bitcoin is a great uh, investment and is one of the options to protect you. There's an interviewer uh, out with him. So that's interesting. And yeah, Microsoft is super interesting uh, because that could actually happen. And it's a shareholder uh, voting. And guess who's the second biggest shareholder of Microsoft? 
BlackRock. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, guess how Microsoft would buy Bitcoin? Probably with the Bitcoin ETF, with BlackRock. <laughs> so uh, they have an incentive, uh, incentive to, to lobby a little bit with Microsoft that they buy their uh, Bitcoin ETF. So it's all really, really interesting how those Bitcoin ETFs then also drive the, the company adoption. So <laughs> it, it's just like so fun to watch. Like <laughs> I, I love, I love what I do. <laughs> But see, it's a popularity thing. Like I said, it's it, it's a it's just like a high school click. Like, you know, everyone doesn't all jump in into the next hot thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's one person, and I'm like, oh, I like that guy. Like, what's he wearing? Oh, let me just start doing it. Then you do it, and the other person does it, and I feel like that's what's happening. And it it all goes back to reputation, right? You don't want to be the first one to go up in flames after making a big move, and so. To me, BlackRock was the first stepping stone. Once that becomes more familiarized with, you know, investment houses, you know, like families and, and everything like that, like, dude, it's only going to be a ripple effect. It, it's a matter of time. And I, I think this consolidation that we've seen this this year is just setting us up for such a, a an, an insane appreciation in price. What's your, like, I don't even know if you've been asked this in your podcast, but what's your what's your top prediction and bottom prediction for the next cycle? Like what's going to be the bottom and top? Uh, so you mean bottom of, uh, from having to having a cycle. So from the last yeah, basically having to- like, yeah, you know, what was the bottom for last cycle? It was 15, 15 K. Yeah. So I think this, th- th- this, this having bottom, I think we already saw, I think we feel like 30, 40,000. I, I don't think it, it's really hard for me to imagine that we actually dip, below that it wouldn't need like a massive event like i don't know coinbase nah, goes yeah, bust or something like that yeah. uh to, to go there uh, i i don't i never i don't think we will ever see uh the 20 30 40 000 range maybe 50 000 if something small happens i don't know uh but i don't even have a hard time thinking about that and the top um the most realistic cases are between 150 and 350k that that's kind of the realistic top but honestly, everything is possible. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I, I wish we don't have a million Bitcoin for two reasons. First of all, it's uh, too high. <laughs> I don't want to buy uh, so so high. I am young. I want to buy low. Yeah. I, I would yeah. love to have Bitcoin lower and, and not not higher. Uh, and the second reason is, what, what, what does it mean if Bitcoin goes to a million or two million or some crazy number like that in the next two years? That yeah, means the fiat system cracks down yep. massively. And that that is a lot of pain in your families, in your neighborhoods, uh, with loved ones that don't have Bitcoin. So I don't wish that for the world. I, I would love the fiat system, like just like slowly uh, <laughs> uh, de- uh, devalue yourself uh, in, yeah. into the future, in, into existence. So uh, th- that that's the, the more likely. But yeah, my, my guess is also, as you said, 200,000. I see it like around 150 to 350,000. It's obviously a big range. Uh, if to have to put a number on there, I would shoot for the 250,000. I love that number because it's a quarter million also. Mm-hmm. I think that would be an amazing number to hit. Uh, but yeah, around that range, I think uh, we will end up. Um, but with the Bitcoin price, every it's everyone's guess. Uh, and it's also so funny when I see people, because I sometimes put the Bitcoin price as, as the thumbnail and people are like, oh, never reaches that. I'm like, <laughs> you, you don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't pretend to know. But you also don't know. You, yeah. you don't know if Bitcoin is next year 2 million. Like, you have no ways of knowing. I don't uh, wish that to happen, but it could very well happen. <laughs> Yeah, I could. It, yeah, it's it's funny seeing all these traders on on Twitter and X and all fight about that price. I'm like, yeah, it's just that's that's you know. But pe- people still get distracted. I think too distracted. Just focus on adding more to your stack. I mean, it it, it it's that imperative in my opinion. Like, it always goes back to protecting purchasing power to protecting your hard earned money. That's part of the reason why we made these watches. Is going back to that actually. I don't know if I answered my question right at the beginning. It's I want something to remind me of the importance of my hard earned money. Okay. And, and, and that Bitcoin protects that because the U S dollar does not, it actually almost spits on my time and dude, that it, 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 it goes on a deep level, man. Like to me, I, I, it infuriates me that the current system is eroding our purchasing power by about eight 
on average, 8% on average every year. And it's a hidden tax. You know, what, what makes me the most mad is that it's my family members, my friends who are experiencing this without even knowing and without even knowing why. So that's why we have to keep pushing the adoption. That's why, you know, these watches to me remind me of that. Like, hey, like this is Bitcoin's protecting me through time. Um, and it's a it's a piece that I wear like every day to remind myself of that. And that's why 45 people, 45 uh, countries, you know, it's, it, those watches are worn about 45 countries right now. So because people believe in that movement, people believe in that movement and they want to push that adoption. And so. Yeah, every company out there, every business person, everyone who at least understands the issue, we have to keep letting people know that it's that important because we don't want our our peers to become poorer. We don't want them to continue struggling. Um, And it's going to be a crazy shift, man. I I think uh, for those who do own Bitcoin, even if it's 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, like I think we're going to start becoming, you know, seeing a shift in the elite. He who has the money makes the rules. If it starts shifting in this direction to where Bitcoin does become the standard, those who hold Bitcoin, um, which tend to be more, I would say in my eyes, more benevolent, more you know, loving, more understanding about making a better world, hopefully the world does become better um, because we're going to have, we're going to be the ones who have the wealth because Bitcoin, that's where wealth is going to gravitate towards the hardest money. Um, because you don't want to hold anything else. You really don't. I love that so much. I love that so much. Really cool. Um, for, for Before we come to the end routine, I, I want to get a little bit also in, in Coin Vigilante uh, and ask some questions around that. Um, where does the name and the brand uh, Vigilante and, and uh, c- come from? Where, where, where does that have this origin? Yeah, it also goes back to creating something that you know, has, has a meaning. So vigilante to me it, it's, is someone, sometimes it can be seen as negative, um, but it, it's someone who does not have to wait for the government or for a central authority to bring justice to the table, right? Because oftentimes it's, you know, the individual that has to do that. And we're doing it in regards to Bitcoin. So we have us who are the vigilantes who are trying to, you know, bring financial sovereignty and, and wealth and, and protection to individuals and people. So that that's basically what it means. And that's why the logo, it's kind of like a futuristic hooded person. That's pretty much what it tries to be. And so ideally, every person who wants it is a coin vigilante, you know what I mean? So that's a little bit of the meaning behind it. I love that a lot. Really cool. Uh, last questions around that. Um, as you also uh a watch is is for me always more than just a device that shows you the time. It's it, it's a piece of art. It's something uh, to to show off who you 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 actually are. Like something that you wear because if it's just about the time, <laughs> there, there's a form. There's a lot of a lot of a lot of things uh, how we can see the time. Um, how do you think will Bitcoin impact uh, culture, art, and, and this creative outlet? Uh, and even like architecture and, and, and stuff like that? That's a that's a great question. I think it's going to go back to the load, load time preference. And this was actually discussed in the Bitcoin standard. Um, back when we were in a gold standard and we were in, you know, beautiful eras. I mean, we you, you were seeing architecture being built like never seen before. Beautiful, amazing architecture, art painted on walls and ceilings and you know, it was things that took years and years and years. You know, there's actually projects that took decades, even, you know, like the, basically the guy starting that project would die off and it would be taken by someone else because the projects were that big. And they were thinking about beauty, glory, which always takes time. And I think as more and more of that low time preference idea starts being in, in, ingrained into people, they're going to understand that. Um, you know, because right now we're, we're, dude, you, you've seen it. You've also seen the, almost like the, there's a, a, a correlation between our purchasing power being utterly destroyed <clears throat> and devalued and art in today's world being devalued. Like right now I could probably like put a bunch of paint on my hand, just slap a wall 
and that could probably be in a museum and go for a million dollars. Okay. Like it's that crazy. Like the, the it, it, even art is not appreciated because we, we don't have that appreciation anymore. Um, it goes back to the watches too. I mean, like, and I, I, I think it's going to be an interesting shift and I hope it does go in that direction, but we're seeing it. And well, that's why we're also trying to, to do coin vigilante as one of the leading watch companies in the new system, which is going to be the Bitcoin system. So ideally, and honestly, like it, it will be very interesting. If we do move into a Bitcoin standard, I'm interested to see where coin vigilante goes because uh, everyone will know about Bitcoin. And as a result of that, we're going to get a lot of attention in that regard. So to me, I don't know. It's exciting. We'll see where it goes, but you know, and speaking of beauty, you know, that's part of the reason why a lot of our designs take forever to make. Um, for example, this watch right here, and this, it's the one that we're going to sell. So we're, we already are doing pre-orders for it. This is the very first prototype that we made for the Genesis watch, Genesis edition. Um, and interestingly, I'll show you since, since it was, this will be kind of like a sneak peek and kind of like a behind the scenes that no one even knows. We were actually going to, yeah, you probably can't see it, but in the case back, right over here, you won't, you can't see it, but we actually had the the logo of the Times. So maybe you can pull it up when you do your edits or whatever. But the Times logo of the newspaper was gonna be on there, and it was gonna be beautiful. Like you could actually see, you could probably pull up the picture right now. Of the Times uh, Chancellor and Brink of second bailout for banks. Um, we were engraving that logo but then we're like wait a minute i think we're gonna have some uh copyright issues there <laughs> we can't do that i don't think um so we we scrapped that and now we only have the text which is the same font same everything that was on the the print okay so you'll, you'll actually see it yeah so so it's, it's actually a, a different one no look up just look up the times and then look up chancellor on brink <clears throat> oh this one probably yeah, do that. And then, yeah, look it up on the images. <clears throat> so right now it only has that. Like the the basically, go to, where's the picture? Here, go, yeah, right there. So we were actually going to have that specific logo incredibly detailed, like to the, to, to the T. But, you know, we decided to take it off due to, you know, compliance issues and whatever. Um, but <clears throat> now people know. Yeah, really cool. I love that a lot. Uh, I think the 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 level of detail is the one that I like the most. Like the the small things that you can even like take to orange pill people. Uh, yeah. I, I like like the new watch a lot because there's like some uh, with the Genesis edition you can explain things. So it it has a story to it. It has something uh, you can talk about in there. Oh, yeah. So that, that's, that's really, I'm really looking forward to, to, to get it. <laughs> oh, by far. I mean, I mean, literally every time someone asks about it, I mean, you're almost gonna have to explain like the Genesis block, <laughs> like every time. I mean, seriously, like, oh yeah, it's like coin vigilante watch is the Genesis. Well, what the heck's the Genesis? Well, you know, and it actually has a, the Genesis block hash engraved, you know, where the minute marks traditionally go. So it's it's pretty unique. I mean, they're one of a kind. Each watch is numbered from 000 out of 121. And the craziest thing, which, you know, it was a great idea that we followed, was every watch is going to have the block height right here engraved. This one doesn't have it, just a prototype. Engraved at the point in which that watch was finalized and completed. So every every watch will have its own specific block height, which is pretty unique. So you literally have a watch that you're carrying everywhere and you'll be able to see, well, this watch was completed at block 865,000, blah, 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 which tells you, you know, the Bitcoin timeline. I think it's cool. I love that. Uh, and it's also the uh, the piece number is also engraved, right? When I saw mm -hmm. that. Yeah, in the back. I love that a lot. Really cool. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that, and I will show it off in in the in the mid roll ad uh, once I get it, and obviously on my on, on my wrist. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, now coming to the end routine of the podcast, the time flew really by. Uh, what the the question that every one of my guests gets? What can we learn from you besides Bitcoin? Besides Bitcoin, that's a tough question. I would say. 
you know, throughout my lifetime, something that has helped me immensely is always growing on my skills. So we always have to start stop thinking about not just how to how to get wealthy, how to you know how to do this and that. Like it, it's to me, it's always skills first, and then results and achievements and goals later. What happens if I hit a million dollars right now, dude? If I don't have a skill to have the discipline to know how to keep my my money, it's over. Okay, I have an amazing business idea, but I have zero skills. How are you going to start that business? Well, if I know I can do this, but I don't know how to use AI to help me how to be incredibly productive, no way to figure that out, right? So to me, I think I used to place a lot of focus on like, dude, I just got to bank huge money placing, you know, a lot of value here and that. But no, it, ultimately what's helped me in the long run has been my skill set. So I, I learned that from tennis. So that, I guess that's a thing that you didn't, aside from, from Bitcoin, I was always a hardcore tennis player and, you know, tennis is a, is a sport where, you know, you see results directly from the skills that you learn and how you perfect those skills. And so I, I always, I love sports. Sports have t taught me competitiveness, how to be, you know, how to compete. It teaches you how to deal with getting kicked in the nuts and, you know, dealing with failure, dealing with wins. Um, I'm definitely going to put my kid in sports from the day that he can start swinging a racket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sports is so uh, important to learn so many interesting things. Um, perfect. And let's come to the end routine of the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest uh, actually is. Um, your question from the previous guest has actually to do something with wins. Uh, what will be the biggest tailwind for Bitcoin in the coming years? Tailwind meaning like one of the, the issues that it runs into? Uh, no, the the opposite of that. So like yeah, the, uh, the, the, the wind that uh, kind of blows from behind the Bitcoin and um, <laughs> makes the adoption uh, fast of it. Um, At least I think that's I, the tailwind. I, I think yeah. this uh, election is going to be very important. There has been... The U.S. is leader in technology. The U.S. is leader in, you know, innovation. And so far, and I'm not trying to get political, but we've seen mention of Bitcoin coming out of Donald Trump's mouth hundreds of times. He knows about it. He actually has some policy that's going to be done towards it, which is very favorable. And then Kamala Harris, I don't think, has said the word Bitcoin ever. Seriously. Um, so... I think this is going to play a major role, uh, depending on who wins. Bitcoin is still going to succeed no matter what, um, but it's going to be a catalyst, is my, in my opinion. Once we see um, a huge company, not not MicroStrategy, but one of the top ten companies in the, in the U.S. actually like either they're having it as their reserve or they're accepting directly as Bitcoin payment, that's going to be. That's going to be the big, the big. Absolutely, yeah, it's it will be a massive, massive catalyst. Um, I think <laughs> it's uh, it, it's really interesting to will be watching the the um, the election. Even I, as a European, really look forward to the election in the, in the in America because I think it has actual real world implications on Bitcoin because there's a clear Bitcoin administration. There's a clear administration that is. That, that probably will be hostile, more hostile to Bitcoin. So it has even outside of the U.S. implications this time around. Oh, absolutely. I, but I just can't wait for the election to be over. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> wait, get it over with. It's, I'm done. <laughs> too much uncertainty. Yeah. And outside of that also, um, I, I, I try to not talk too much about politics. Uh, but this year it was really hard <laughs> because of the elections. <laughs> it's impossible not to talk about it. I mean, it really isn't. Perfect. But uh, then let's, uh, before I let you go, uh, where can people find you, ask your questions, DM you, and also where can they find uh, Coin Vigilante? Yeah, just go to coinvigilante.com. Uh, again, pre orders are open for that watch. And then if you want to find me, just go to Mr. Vigilante BTC. That's my uh, username on Twitter or X, you can always reach out. I'm super cool opening DMs, talking, uh, doing conversations. So that's where you can find me.
Thank you so much, uh, Carlos, for being on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening uh, for taking the time and joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.